And if you guys will excuse me, I'll uh, I'll proceed. Yeah. How is it now? Well, good afternoon, Manchester. Hope you all having a good day. Gospel time here. Market Street once again. The good news. Gospel. That's what the word means. Good news. Of course, it's only good news if you see yourself as God sees you. It's only good news if you see yourself, you know, as well as you really are. And that's, you know, not good. A lot of people, you know, I talk to them and they tell me that they're good people. But, you know, um, God says that there's none that doeth good. God says uh, that only he himself is good no one else and of course when you stop to think about that you know and you take a glimpse you know you take a look at yourself you know in the mirror not the one on the wall the mirror of God's law I mean you know you see a different reflection than you do you know when you look at the one on the wall it tells you the same lie every time that you're the fairest of them all and that's not the truth. You know it and I know it. You see, when you look in the mirror of God's law, you see a totally different reflection altogether. You see a deceitful-hearted sinner, desperately wicked, and of course unknown even to yourself, lest God was to reveal it to you. So you see, that's why we need the gospel. That's why we need the good news. That's why we need the truth, you know. Here's the trouble, friends, you know, the world over, you know, society over, you know, even Manchester, you know, we've bought into the lie. We're all, we've all exchanged the truth for a lie, and you're living the lie, you know. We don't tell the truth about nothing, and it's not just the politicians, the philosophers, you know, eh, eh, the courts, eh, the police authorities, the whole, the whole shebang, you know, all are bought into the lie, and you're living a lie, you know. Yeah, but the thing is that, uh, you know, Jesus says it's the truth. It's the truth that will make you free, and there ain't no truth outside of this book, outside of the Bible. God's indictment of the human race is that all men are liars. And that's the truth. And of course, with deceitful hearts, if you're a deceitful-hearted sinner, well, you're going to be in love. You're going to be in love with that which is deceitful. You're going to be in love with the lie, and that's why people embrace this this lie, evolution. You know, because you love the lie. You know. So you see, there's only one answer to that, and that's for the heart to be changed. You know, and to begin to hate the lie, and love the truth. That's the only answer. But of course, that would take a miracle, wouldn't it? How can you who are accustomed to doing evil, says God, how can you do good? You know, habitually accustomed to the lie, and living the lie, speaking the lie, how can you possibly do truth? You know, unless there's a mega change Unless your heart, unless that deceitful nature is taken out of you, extracted from you, and you're given a new nature. One that loves, one that desires, and one that obeys, and one that speaks the truth. You see, that alone will transform your life. That alone will transform Manchester the United Kingdom. We got a big election today. Here we go. We got another drive-by heckler. Hey, I love him. <laughs> Don't you love him, eh? They won't stand and talk to you. They just shout from a distance, like you know. But here's the thing, friends. You know, we got a big uh, election today, and who's for government? Is it Carbon, the communist, or is it, uh, or is it Mrs. May? Which will it be? Brexit may or commie carbon? 
But I tell you what, friends, it doesn't matter which one gets into power. It won't bring no changes soon. It won't bring no change to you, to me, the man in the street, you know. They'll just carry on with their lies. They'll just carry on with their U-turns. They'll just carry on, you know. Hey, they'll be okay living in their multi, multi-million pound mansions, you know, while you struggle to pay the mortgage, you know, or to keep the rent up. And there won't be no changes. You want change, you want mega change, you want change for the better, you want real change. You want the gospel, you want Jesus Christ, you want the Son of God who come into the world that you might have life, 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 friends. Life from the dead. You what, friend? What? Can I take Jesus into a ring? I want my going 12 rounds to him. What are you saying? I want my going 12 rounds with him. Come and talk to me. I want my going 12 rounds with Jesus. And then the Repent and believe the gospel, son. Repent and believe the gospel. That's what you need. The gospel is good news. Good news for sinners because you tell me, you say, I ain't no sinner. Well, I guess this isn't for you, like, just, you know, carry on. You say, I'm okay. My buddy there's giving out some leaflets, you know. And I guarantee, I guarantee the answer he gets more often than not is, I'm okay, I'm good, you know. Eh? I wish you were good, I wish you were okay. But here's the thing, here's the thing, friends. That's your self-righteousness. Because you're not okay, you know you're okay. But you see, you, you cling to the lie again. You see, it's the lie. You exchange the truth for a lie. You bought into the lie. You live the lie. You speak the lie. You dream the lie. You know? It's a lie. You're not good. You're not okay. But that's the answer you give my body. You know, when he offers you a leaflet, I'm okay. Self-righteousness. And don't you know, friends, uh, Jesus never had nothing to say to the self-righteous I came for the poor, I came for the brokenhearted, I came to release the captives, all kinds of people that he came for. But there's one, one kind of people that's not mentioned in that list, and that, friends, is the self-righteous, because Jesus never had nothing to say to the self-righteous. righteous. God hates self-righteousness. Jesus tells a story about a couple of guys, you know, you know about that, you know. They went to the temple like the church, you know. And this one dude, you know, he's so good, you know, and he's thanking God. He's saying, I thank you, God, that I'm not like other men. I don't do the adultery. I don't do the filth. You know, I don't do the thieving. I give money to the church. You know, I thank God I'm a good guy. You know, self-righteous. And then the other guy, he comes in, you know, and he won't as much as look up to heaven, but he beats his breast and he cries out to God, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Which one? Gospel, sir. Good news. Repent and believe the gospel. And you know, he says, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus, which of those two guys went home justified, went home right with God? Well, you know the answer, don't you? What the self-righteous did? It was the second guy. It was the one who cried out to God, God be merciful to me, a sinner. So you think you're okay, you think you're good, you don't need my gospel. You don't need Jesus. Well, friends, you know, this ain't for you, I guess. You know, just you carry on. But if you're a sinner like the rest of mankind, you've fallen short of the glory of God. You've messed up with God, you know, broken His law. We all have, for we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God says so. All sinners to a man, to a woman, none righteous, none that doeth good. That's us all. But friends, that's how you see yourself. Well, the good news for you, we got a gospel for you. 
salvation for you, redemption for those see themselves as sinners. Christ Jesus came into the world. What for? Religious people? No. Respectable people? No. Uh, people that live up in Knob Hill? No. Who do they come for? Middle class dudes? You know, that trip to church every Sunday? No. That's not what the Bible says. It says Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And the gospel, friends, after 6,000 years, is still, is still, wait for it, is still good news, is still the power of God unto salvation. For everybody, head for head, no. For all who are religious, no. For all who are respectable, no. For all nice, clean, tidy, respectable, middle-class dudes that go tripping off to church every Sunday morning. No, for everybody that believeth. Faith, faith, friends, faith and faith alone is what justifies, makes a man a woman right with God. The God I mean. I mean the God you know exists. I mean, the God we all know exists, you know? Anybody like to take us on with this evolutionary matter? You know, it's a bold statement, I guess, you know, in a country, in a city that's absolutely sunk, absolutely entrenched in unbelieving evolutionism. That's a bold statement, isn't it? Evolution is a lie. Well, here we are, you know? Uh, come and challenge us, if you will. Debate the matter, if you will. But I tell you this, friends, you know, I take God's word over yours any day of the week. God says that in the beginning, He created the heavens and the earth. And guess what, people? We know somebody who was there. I don't care what Dawkins tells you. I don't care what, I don't care what Darwin tells you. Dawkins weren't there in the beginning. Darwin wasn't there in the beginning, but I know somebody who was there, and he says he, he created it all in the beginning. By the word of his power, he simply spoke and created a universe and everything in it. So you see, friends, the matter's not up really for, for challenge, you know. God says it's manifest in you. Yeah? It's manifest in you, the knowledge of God, that is, you know? But here's the thing. You try to smother the truth. You can't, you know, but you try. And you use stuff like evolution. You use Darwin. You use Dawkins. You use all that kind of stuff, you know, to smother the truth in unrighteousness and wickedness because you're a sinner in love with sin. That's why. But here's the thing, friends, you know, that Jesus came to save you from that. He came to save you from the lie. He came to save you, you know, from the lie that you've embraced, from the lie that you're taught from the cradle to the grave, you know, the primary school, secondary school, university, you know, the media, your songs, your books, you know, your television, your internet, you know, you're just utterly indoctrinated with the lie. And it's only the truth that will make you free, Jesus says. The truth that is that God is your creator, your lawgiver, your judge. And I hope through the preaching of the gospel today that he'll become your redeemer, your savior through his son, Jesus Christ. The gospel, oh, it's good news. It really is, friends. But we, I throw the challenge out, you know. You like the challenge, you got a word to say, come and talk to me, you know. Evolution, it's a lie, it's not true. There's no justification for it, not at all. What about you, sir? You believe in evolution, sir? Huh? What about you, sir? You believe in evolution? Why? You like to try and justify it? You might as well believe in Mickey Mouse there. How you doing, sir? Ma'am, whatever you are. You believe in evolution, sir? Eh? 
You don't? Oh, good. Good. We got one. Well, one guy's rejected the lie. Come on, guys. Somebody give me something, you know? Huh? Any of you like to challenge the statement? Evolution is a lie? You know, give me one. Give me one ounce of justification for it. Huh? You can't see. You say that you believe in evolution, but you don't. See those two. See the, see those uh, those two policemen over there talking to that guy. That's proof that you don't believe in evolution. Huh? You believe in evolution, sir? Huh? You not talk English? Huh? You be, you believe in evolution, ma'am? Come on, somebody give me something. You know? No, you don't believe in evolution. And those, those two policemen, they're proof, you see, that you don't believe in evolution. Oh, you say you do. You say you do. But you don't practice what you preach. Here's the thing, you know. You point at us, you know, at the church, and you say, bunch of hypocrites. Hey, you're the biggest hypocrites going. You say you believe in evolution, but you don't practice what you preach. Hey? You don't practice what you say you believe. Because you've got a standard of morality. That's why you got policemen. And where do you get that standard of morality from? Where do you get ethics of any kind from? From evolution, an evolutionary world view. That's impossible. You don't get ethics, you don't get morality out of a lump of matter. Ethics, morality, you know? Laws of nature, of logic, philosophy, all these all these laws, the laws of gravity, you know, laws, all this comes from an intelligent mind. But here's the thing, you know, you believe, and hey, you believe it's wrong, you believe it's wrong, that guy, you know that guy, was that, what, two weeks ago, you know, killed all these people back in the arena? You, you think that was morally unacceptable? You think that was wrong, Manchester? Well, why? If you're an evolutionist, isn't that just Darwinianism in operation? Isn't that what you say you believe? You know, the, the, the strong overcoming the weak? I mean, that's what evolution teaches, isn't it? The strong survive and the weak go to the wall. So is it wrong for a man to kill another man? Is it wrong for a man to rape a woman? You say, of course it is. But where do you get that from in an evolutionary world view? Where do you get the morality from? Where do you get the standard from? I tell you, friends, the fact that you've got government, the fact that you've got courts, the fact that you've got policemen, the fact that you've got jails is a testimony against your hypocrisy, you say you believe in evolution, but you don't because you cling to a moral standard. Where do you get the moral standard from? I'll tell you where you get it from. You got a conscience. Do you know what the word conscience means? Anybody? Ma'am, do you know what the word conscience means? No? It means, it means with knowledge. With knowledge. With knowledge of what's right and wrong, your conscience stabs you when you do wrong. It pats you in the head when you do right. You've got a God-given conscience. You know when a thing's wrong, and you know when a thing's right. And you can't escape it. You can't escape it, you know? But here you go, you know, you cling to this moral standard, you know? You don't practice. You see, you don't practice what you... You say that you believe, and my argument is you do not truly believe this stuff, you know? You do not believe... You couldn't even have a meaningful thought without God. Where do you get knowledge from, you know? Hey, some dudes, they come, you know, they say, science, 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 you know? Like science was some kind of fairy godmother that waves the wand and brought the universe into being, you know? Here's the thing, friends, you can't do science without knowledge. And science is only an instrument by which you examine the knowledge that you've got. But where do you get the knowledge from to do science? In an evolutionary worldview. Why do you get knowledge out of matter? 
let me get it right, you know. There was this big bang, you know. Nobody knows where the bang came from. Nobody can explain the bang, you know, but there was this explosion. Nobody knows where the chemicals came from to make the explosion, but there was this explosion, and it brought this great big lump of matter into being. And out of this great big lump of matter came spontaneous life and knowledge. Oh, what magic, friends! Friends, I've got a God that did all that. The true and living God. The God of the Bible who created the heavens and the earth and everything in them. Friends, it's a lie. It's a lie. Evolution is a lie. The truth, it's the truth. It's the truth that you need. It's the truth that makes men free. You see, that liberates you from believing the lie, living the lie, obeying the lie. But that's the problem with your society. It's not just the politics, friends. That's lies. I know. We all know that. We know that from the cradle to the grave. That ain't going to change anytime soon. It won't change as a result of today's election. But friends, it can change for you. Embrace the truth. The truth as it is in Jesus, who came to make you free, to set you free. The greatest freedom fighter that ever walked the face of this earth, his name is Jesus. He's a Savior. He's a Savior. He came and he lived and loved and died and rose again from the dead. You want, sir? You got something to say, sir? And you, sir. He came. He lived and loved and died and rose again from the dead to loose men and women from their sin. To loose men and women from the lie. It's a lie. It's a lie that keeps you from salvation, that keeps you from Jesus, that keeps you from God, that keeps you from eternal life, that keeps you from living. Friends, as long, as long as you're in the lie... As long as you're believing the lie, as long as you're living the lie, you got no life in you. Everything's just simply death. The lie produces death. You see, it's the truth that produces life. Life eternal. Quality of life here and now in this world. It's not all just, you know, pie in the sky when we die. There's yeah, some of that, there's a lot of that, yeah. We got the promise of heaven, but you got, you got the promise of, of eternal life living and working in you in this, in this life, in this world. But here's the thing, friends, you know, without Jesus, you ain't got no life. You ain't got no life. You're just in a state of death. You know, as long as you're in the lie, living the lie, believing the lie, trust in the lie. As long as you're in the life, friends, you got no life in you. You got no Jesus. And you got no Jesus, you got no truth. And you got no Jesus, you got no, you got no life. All you got is death. Dead in trespasses and sins, the Bible says. See, it's not just that you're a little bit dead. It's not just that you're somewhat dead. It's that you are totally and completely dead. Spiritually and morally dead as far as God's concerned. Not even on the not even on the map. No, sir. No, sir. I've only just started. Repent and believe the gospel, young man. So I see you guys believe in evolution. Tell me you don't. You don't? Wow. Huh? All right, okay. That's yourself, you mean? <laughs> That's yourself. You need to repent and believe the gospel too. Have a good day, guys. I hope we're open to a challenge, you know. Evolution is a lie, you know. Uh, somebody tell me different. Somebody prove different. Somebody justify it Jesus for me. Up. Yeah? You want another drive-by heckler, eh? The world is full of drive-by hecklers, I tell you, you know. You throw out these statements, you know, walking past. 
to stop and defend, find your corner. I think maybe you need your mouth. I think you need your mouth washing out, young man. Repent, believe the gospel. Repent, believe the gospel. That'll that'll do the business. That'll that'll change your heart. That'll take that vile vile language out of you. See, they care not for women or children. What a society we're living in, eh? Do you see what you've turned Manchester into? No wonder the wrath of God, you know? No wonder the wrath of God's all over our nation. Friends, you know, it's the truth. It's the truth, only the truth, you see, that will, will set you free, you know, from the lie and bring life to your soul, bring Jesus, you know, into your heart and life because without Him you got nothing. You know, and you might have all the, you might have all the stuff, you know, you might have all the, all the techn- technological tricks, you know, computers and phones and, and Wi-Fi's, you know, and, and tellies, you know, your house filled with all kinds of stuff, you know, you might be as rich as rich can be, you know, you might be a king, you might just be a street preacher, but I tell you, everybody faces the grim reaper. Everybody. You know? There's no escaping it, friends. Death is a reality. And you know, it's a lie. It's because your first parents and my first parents, Adam and Eve, because they embraced the lie sold to them by the devil, because they embraced the lie, they brought the lie to the rest of us. And you live in that lie. You live in that lie. You obey the lie. You trust in the lie. And that keeps you in that state of death. And death, friends, the wages of sin is death, you see. That's the payback. That's the wages. That's the recompense. The Bible says sin has its own recompense, you know, in this world, not just the world to come. Because you see, when you give yourself over to the lie, you exchange the truth for a lie, you live the lie, you trust the lie, God gives you over to the lie. He gives you over to more sin. He punishes sin with sin. And friends, you know, some of you know that already. Some of you, you know, you're suffering in body. Your bodies are broken, you know, because of the sinful way you've been living. Some of you, your minds are broken. That's what sin does. You know, it damages people seriously. But the end of it, the end of it is death. The wages of sin is death, spiritual death, separation from God now. Physical death that comes to us all it is appointed unto man wants to die. A divine appointment. Yeah, we're all going to die. Cock your toes up, go out this world. Feet first, the same way you come in, the same way you go out, naked. You don't take the stuff with you. It is appointed unto man wants to die. Ah, then that's the end, you see. Six feet of earth, splodge, end of story, finito, black hole, nobody knows, nobody ever came back to tell us, yes they did, Jesus did, and he tells us, after this, then comes judgment, then you stand before a holy and sin-hating God, and you give a count, friends, you give a count, naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom you must give account. So friends, physical death, but then comes the second death, as the Bible calls it, the lake of fire, the judgment of God. And it's not for good people, it's not for innocent people, but then there is no such thing as an innocent person. There is no such thing as a good person. There's none good, says God. No, not one. None that doeth good. None righteous, says God. Not a one. Only God is good, Jesus says. So you see, friends, you're all, each and every one of you, in need of God's salvation, of my gospel. It's the power of God to save dead sinners, to bring life to dead sinners. The word power you know, in the Bible, it's the word that we get, the word, 
the English word dynamite from? The gospel is the dynamite of God. Eh? Dynamite of God to bring salvation, to bring life. But you say, dynamite's destructive. No, friends. Not always. Sometimes it's used for a good purpose. Sometimes they use it to put fires out. Sometimes they use it to open up mines, to get all kinds of treasures out, diamonds and gold. But friends, but friends, I'll you again. Told you, repent and believe the gospel, young man. But friends, you know, the dynamite of God, you see, it opens up the blessings of God's kingdom to men and women who believe the gospel, the good news. Concerning God's Son, Jesus Christ, I mean. See, it's faith, friends. Faith and faith alone. Only faith. Faith apart from works. Nothing that you can do. Nothing that I can do to make us right with God. Friends, only trusting in what someone else has done. Jesus, His death, His resurrection. Trusting in the work of Jesus because your work is no good, religious or otherwise. Your, your, your good deeds, you know. Your, your so-called obedience to God is shot through. Because all you are, you see, is just a lump of walking, breathing, talking sin. That's all that you are. So anything that you would offer to God is an offense to God because it's tainted with sin. God requires a perfect sacrifice. And the only one who can offer God a perfect sacrifice is His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. His perfect sacrifice. His perfect righteousness. So when you're trusting in Jesus, you're good to go. When you're trusting in Jesus... You're acceptable to God. But outside of Jesus, outside of Jesus, you got no acceptability to God. Only Jesus, only Jesus, no one else. The Son of God, the only begotten Son of God. Not Muhammad, not Buddha, not Confucius, not the Watchtower Society. Uh, not any of these friends, only Jesus. The Bible says Jesus Christ is Lord. Why, Jesus? Because He alone conquered sin and death and hell and overcame death. He's alive from the dead and alive forevermore. That's why Jesus Christ is Lord. And He alone is Lord. No one else. And friends, He's the Lord that you need. He's the one you need to save you and to govern your heart and life. And He promises to do that. For all that is, who shun the lie, who abandon the lie, who renounce the lie, and embrace the truth, the truth as it is in Jesus. It's the truth that will make you free, you see. Get rid of the lie. The lie, the lie. It's the lie that's destroying you. It's the lie that's taking the life out of you. It's the lie, it's the lie, it's the lie. And that comes from Satan. That comes from the father of lies. Jesus says he was a murderer from the beginning. He's the arch deceiver. That's his, that's his greatest tool. Deceit, friends. He's a deceiver. He's a liar. And he will lie you into hell. He will deceive you into hell if you allow him. He wants to... He wants to populate hell with as many people as he possibly can. He knows where he's going. And he wants, he wants to take you with him. Friends, don't let him. Don't let him. Abandon the lie. Renounce the lie. Turn from the lie. Believe the truth. And the truth will make you free. The truth as it is in Jesus. And the truth about Jesus. The only begotten Son of God. Full of grace and truth. And friends, who brought the grace of God to us. And the grace of God that brings salvation to all men. All men who believe the gospel, that is. Oh, it's good news, friends. It's grace. It's grace. God's wonderful grace. He presents you with that which you least deserve. 
We all of us deserve punishment. We all of us deserve hell. We all of us deserve eternal separation from God. But God offers you the exact opposite. His Son and His grace through His Son, Jesus Christ, that will bring salvation to you. The grace of God that transforms men and women. That takes the hatred out of men's hearts. You know? That takes the lie out of men's hearts. That takes the, the love for the lie and the love for the hatred out of men's hearts. And gives them a new heart. Takes the heart of stone out of them. Gives them a heart of flesh. You know? Gives them a heart that loves the truth and hates the lie. Gives them, a, gives them a heart that desires God, wants God, loves God, instead of hating God. Born again, Jesus calls it. You must be born again. Except lest the man's born again, he can't see. He can't perceive, he can't understand the kingdom of God. Never mind enter into it. You gotta be born again. Good bishop, there was once a good bishop, a long, long time ago though, <laughs> a long, long time ago, over a hundred years I reckon, the good bishop of Liverpool, he said one time, he said, if, you, if you're not born again, the day will come when you will wish you had never been born at all. You must be born again. The heart must be changed, the nature must be changed. Given a new heart, new life, new status before God. How's your status today? How's your status today? I don't mean your Facebook one. I mean, how's your, how's your status with God, friends? How's your status with God? Are you on the smiling side of God? Are you on the right side of God? Have you repented and believed the gospel, the good news concerning His Son, Jesus Christ, the only begotten of the Father? full of grace and truth have you believed in Jesus? Because if you haven't, your status is not good. Your status is bad, bad, bad. You need to repent and believe the gospel. Repent ye and believe the gospel, Jesus says. Why? Because the kingdom of God is at hand. That's why. And that's the only way you can enter into the kingdom of God. In the way of repentance and faith. But these are gifts from God. You can't do it yourself. God has to give them to you. Well, you say, well, why does Jesus command me to repent if I can't do it myself? Well, to bring you to that place of knowing, understanding, I can't do nothing myself. I can't do nothing myself unless He does it for me. I'm lost, you know? and brings you to that place of crying out to Almighty God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Crying out to God, God, give me repentance. Give me faith. Save me or I die or I perish. Please. Friends, I don't talk to drive-by hecklers anymore. I've given up on them. They're a waste of time. They just keep going. Friends, repent you and believe the gospel. Repent you and believe the good news and get saved and get right with God, you know? You used to have a, you used to have a, a football player here in Manchester City. You got a few, I know. But you used to have one. His name was George Best. He came from Northern Ireland. He was asked by his, he was asked by his niece on television one day. She said to him, she said, Uncle George, what's the best thing to be in all the world? Is it to be famous? He said to her, no. No, he said, it's to be saved. It's to be saved. Saved by Jesus Christ, he meant. Oh, he, under, he understood that, but he never knew it himself. He never knew the reality of himself, but I hope you will. I hope as a result of my being here today, that you'll come to understand these things that God will give you understanding. That He'll chase away the darkness of your mind and give you light. Manchester, Manchester, awake! 
rise from your slumber of death and darkness and go to Christ and He will give you light and love and liberty. Friends, Jesus, Jesus is what you need. It's who you need. Jesus, the Son of God with power to save and deliver you from the wrath to come. Repent ye and believe the gospel, friends. Words of Jesus, first words of Jesus recorded in the New Testament. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Manchester, you hear it? It's the command that comes from the King of kings and Lord of lords. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Manchester, repent ye and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. You'd like to have a copy of God's Word. It's offered to you free of charge and without any cost or any obligation to you whatsoever. Yours to take and do with as you will. You would like one, come and ask for one. May God bless you and have mercy upon your precious, precious, precious souls.